Duran Premium Cigars, one of the fastest growing boutique cigar companies, provides smokers a portal into the old Cuban tradition of the perfect balance and the lost art of progressive flavor construction. Roberto Palayo Duran began his career in tobacco over two decades ago in Havana, where his reputation grew within Cuban circles. The creation of Duran Premium Cigars has given Roberto the platform to introduce a series of cigars that offer the quality and construction that he perfected while in Cuba. Brands include the ultra-premium Roberto P. Duran Signature line, Azan, Nea, and Baracoa. Duran uses a seed to humidor approach as all of their tobacco is grown in their farms and rolled in their factory in Esteli, Nicaragua. Rollers have been carefully chosen to carry out Roberto's precise method to ensure progressive flavor in each cigar. Duran Premium Cigars invites you to make their premium your standard. Welcome back to the Stogie Geek Show. This is the Stogie Geek segment. We are here live from the Villiga North American Studios in Warwick, Rhode Island. Thank you for tuning in to this week's episode of Stogie Geeks. I have to my right Brenda McDuff. She is the manager of Havana Cigar Club over in Warwick, Rhode Island. And we're also joined by our Stogie Geeks production engineer, Mark Anderton. Whoop. Who's now a so geek? Holla. We, Holla. <laughs> one of the things I wanted to talk about, um, as uh, I've been co-host here for Story Geek since the beginning of the year, uh, it's a great opportunity. Appreciate being here. Thank you, Paul. Um, Doing for, great. For the opportunity. One of the things that come up is we always pair cigars with a spirit, right? Scotch, bourbon, you know, whiskey. Yeah. whiskey uh, you know, and any and any type of spirit or coffee, right? Those are the <laughs> those are the 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 <laughs> two main go tos. Okay, I don't want to take away from that, but one of the things I wanted to do is um, talk a little bit about pairing cigars with wine, because like <laughs> having a cigar, right? You don't want to ha- smoke the same thing all the time. Okay, you don't want to smoke the same thing all the time. You want something different on the palate. Okay, and so one of the things I want to take you through this segment here is giving you actual uh, blends of the wine with uh, some cigars. And if you guys had some or, you know, want to jump in, chime in, ask me a question there. Um, Full background, just like cigars, uh, regionally specific, I find that um, wines work the same way. So if you're uh, a consumer and, and you go to a... Uh, liquor store or a boutique liquor store and you don't know, again, you only know by testing it and trying it. And you only know by no, paying attention to the region that the wine is from. Okay? So today, we are doing a uh, Charles and Charles Riesling. Charles and Charles. <laughs> it's a 2015 Riesling. I'm not going to get too boring and talk to you about what the dates mean and all that stuff. If, if uh, anybody wants to know, you can email me at uh, Joe H. At stogiegeeks.com, I can email you the links as to where, where we, you know, to point you in the right direction. But we are smoking, oh, we're smoking. We are drinking <laughs> a, a uh, Riesling, uh, and it's a, a 2015, and it's from Washington State. So it's by Charles and Charles. It's good. Um, there. Yeah, it is. We've had it's it on good. the first segment. What do you think? Yeah, it's good. So it's, I it's, like it. it's subtle. Yeah. And to me, um, uh, a Riesling obviously is, 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 is white. It's meant to be served cold. Yep. And uh, to me, it, it, it brings out the cigar yep. as opposed to sometimes the drink can either overpower, you know, it, overpower the cigar. Yep. I've had some cigars from some boutiques. I'm like, oh, I need an overpowering drink because I'm not going to get through the cigar. Yep. You know, I've done that on the show. <laughs> what did you, <laughs> you smoke know? while you drank it? Um, that, I'm trying to wait till the Sorry. Oh, end yeah, of yeah. that, I forgot right? That. Because <laughs> this is one of the, my pairing is different from Brenda's pairing, it's different from your pairing. But my pairing was strategically picked to match a Riesling. Uh, and I'm not too sure Paul's going to be happy about it. His strategery. <laughs> right? <laughs> right, I'm not. So, uh, once again, Paul, I did raise the pirate flag um, and went through the humidor uh, there. So, <laughs> I, but, but I think he knew that. Uh, uh, ha- raided the booty. The I, I, I raided the booty, right? I sure did, right? <laughs> no it's comment. <laughs> no, no comment. because I, I was thinking about, uh, I was like, the funny thing is, a oh. full disclaimer, Full disclaimer, Paul knows there's like three cigars in this humidor that I absolutely positively love, okay? Mm. So uh, that being said, he probably knows the answer of what I grabbed, (laughs) right? If he's watching live or whichever. But um, I grabbed this year's pork tenderloin. 
Ah. And let me tell you, phenomenal. Like, it's, it's a, a, amazing. It, it, it was an amazing choice for me. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> I knew it would be because I know a little bit about the wine, and I knew yeah. that, and it, 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 it's amazing. Uh, we, we went to an event a couple months ago. Uh, Paul was able to uh, get a bunch of these, um, sp- you know, with, with, with this year's editions, hard to come by, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, people get rowdy for them. There we go. So uh, I'm doing this year's Pork Tenderloin. If you need a review, you can go to storygeeks.com, and you can check that out. Paul ha- and company has reviewed that uh, already in the past. But uh, I, pair- I paired it up with the Riesling, and I paired it up with the Riesling. Uh, I, was go- I was actually toggling between two choices of Riesling. I was going to go with a Chateau Chamachel, which is a um, – it's the brand name of the company. Uh, okay. I was going to go with their Riesling. It was 2014. Um, but I decided to go with the Charles & Charles uh, 2015 from Washington State. And what I like about that is, again, uh, pretty much any wine you get from specific regions that would appear to my palate. And Washington's – when it comes – I like Washington State wine – more than I like Californian wine. Uh, I think Californian wine's done a great job marketing. <laughs> yep. uh, they, they, you know, they, they, uh, there. But again, it's through experimentation. But um, so if I'm, I'm not butting in, nope, what, what, what kind of wine do you like in general? Great question. I like, like reds. Okay. I like reds. Um, it's uh, weird because you chose a white wine. White wine. I chose a white wine. <laughs> I chose a white wine because I knew it would go phenomenal with, with the pork, pork tenderloin. <laughs> right there. So a uh, little bit of self indulgence there. I raised the pirate flag. I raided the booty. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> um, if, when it comes to to me specifically, I drink more reds anyway. Right. But. Um, I, I and again, you want a palate change. I didn't want anything too dry. Yep. I wanted something to, to really bring it out. So that's what I decided to go with. Cheers. Cheers. You know, cheers and cheers. You know, thank <laughs> to you. the chin. Thank you. Thank you for, for And for I'm a consumer, <laughs> so I consume anything and everything. I'm a consumer, so I consume. You can finish that up. So you can finish that I, up. Wait, I wasn't asking. You have a <laughs> <laughs> no, I like and it. And it's gone. <laughs> So and Brenda is smoking with this. The first pairing Ooh, was... The uh, first one was uh, the Otorio Fuente Bestseller Maduro, mm. which is one of my favorites. Yeah. Um, thank you, Paul. Thank yeah. you, Paul. He got that from my humidor, so... She oh, rated the booty. So right? I rated it right back. Oh, yeah. um, oh, and now booty it's, touching uh, in the studio. Once again, Fuente, uh, the Don Carlos Personal Reserva, which he did get from my humidor, so I am taking it back. There you go. He raids <laughs> it before anyone can get them. So. There you go. And what are you doing? Uh, I smoked this first. Oh, the, the Luna? The Rancho Luna. Yep. Uh... The one Paul put in the studio smoking cigars. Yeah. I didn't look too much into it because there's like 15 of them in there. Mm-hmm. So I'll review one eventually. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm smoking the Nub Cafe mm. because I like the flavored ones. Do you really? Do you yeah. Like the flavored ones? I've, had, I've had the Macchiato. Brenda gave me one of those. Sure. I've had the Cafe. I've had... Um, there's a chocolate one, isn't there? Isn't there a chocolate I don't, one? I don't, I don't do a lot of infusion. We, we smoked one in Maine and we just... Okay. It was really, really good. Well, we'll so. get we'll get to that on yeah, the, the next another, segment another over day, there. Another over day. the next segment. <laughs> but in, in regards to wine, one of the things I came up with is I uh, kind of wanted to give people a lay of the land. Okay, so uh, if you're into uh, red Zinfandel, <clears throat> right, you have an elegant mix of berry flav- uh, flavors that are subtle. They have a subtle note in spice. Okay, so think about that, right? So you, so uh, it's it's subtle. Okay, it's going to be a uh, red Zinfandel, so it's going to be a, li- a little lighter, yep. right, on the palate. It's not going to be thick. Shouldn't have a lot of legs, right, on mm. on that thing. I always like a lot of legs. For those of you mm-hmm. who don't know, and you're new, <laughs> when you swirl the wine there, and you can see some of the sediment dripping down, that's actually called legs. Uh, oh, I didn't know that. The mall, that, that, that mm. you, so that's um, you know, it wasn't just as easy top <laughs> song. Just so you know. <laughs> Do you even know who ZZ Top is, though? Yeah, I know who okay, ZZ Top right, is. Right, right. He's great. He's, right, yeah. I'm yeah, I saw them on the Back of the like Future movie, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, anyway, I right. saw them in concert. Anyway. Right? Oh, really? Oh, yeah, yeah, back in Aging the day. Aging yourself. Right? No. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's a four in front of my age. Anyway, right? so um, with the Zinfandel, one of the things I find easier if you're going down this path of trying to blend wine with cigars 
make it easy on yourself, okay? Go at classic facings, okay? Because okay. wines have been around for, uh, and, and, that, and that's a uh, step one. That'll be this segment, okay? Uh, in the event that I get to host the show, uh, all by myself again, or if Paul wants to continue the segment, I can do a segment on boutique facings with mm. the wines as well. So, but but one of the things I tried to do was I tried to keep it there. So, uh, if if you're doing a red Zinfandel, um, you go to my father. What do you think? Not a fan. <coughs> no. No. Of, the, well, of what? The Zinfandel? Talk to me. The, the, the Zinf- Talk, to me not, not. <laughs> Talk to me, Goose. Talk to me. Quack. <laughs> No? <laughs> um, I'm not a big wine drinker. Okay. Um, you're allowed, so yeah, you're allowed to say so. I'm, I'm allowed like to it, say yeah. that? Yeah, no, I'm not a big wine drinker. Okay. Um, whiskey makes me frisky, so usually I stick with that. Um, <laughs> but I guess if you're going to try to pair it with something, what, you know, the Zinfandels will have bring more of a sweetness to them. Well, the reason, the reason behind that is because the berries from the Zinfandel are subtle. Yep. As opposed, even though it's a red. So you want something strong, something so, with a pepper, so, something so with a kick. To you, pair. Right. So, I, so my, you always want to try to find a balance. It doesn't matter with, whether you're very well versed in wine or scotch or this mm-hmm. or that. If you have a rough idea of what it tastes like, um, what it's made with, um, it's a good start to pair stuff. Um, so yeah, usually if you're gonna drink something that's sweeter. Bring something as your cigar a little more spicy, mm-hmm. and vice versa. Because you always look for that balance. They mm-hmm. do the same thing with cigars. You try to get that balance of maybe sweet and spicy or um, spicy and earthy or something like that. So um, that's when you start to take in consideration what you're going to drink with certain cigars. So you don't have to be an aficionado on wine yeah. or this or this and that. Um, and my favorite thing is ask your bartender. You know, right. ask your bartender, what is that like? What does this taste like? Most bartenders will know what they right. carry and what they taste like. Um, if they don't, then ask them for a sample. You there know, you I don't mind. You want to try something? As long as it's not like 21-year-old scotch, you're on your <laughs> own, guy. Um, but if you want to take a little sip, I'll give you a little taste. Taste it, see how it works. And if it works for you, that's what you drink. Here was my rationality to wrap this up, okay? You had to wrap this Zinfandel pairing with this. You have a, a cedar undertone with mm-hmm. the uh, Zinfandel, mm-hmm. right? I didn't get specific on Zinfandel because I'm not, uh, I'm not a Zinfandel drinker, but I've, I do like some reds every once in a while. To me, Wait, it's too I thought thin. you couldn't resist the mist, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh, so, but, but the point was that <laughs> yeah. since yeah. it does have, since the, the wine is not harsh but has some pepper elements, I thought that my father mm. pepper element yeah. would, mm. would, in the, it would, would, would bring it up. The well, if it does element, have a pepper yeah. element and certain my father's stuff, if you're going classic Don Pepin, Peppa, peppa, peppa. Mm-hmm. And you put pepper on pepper. <laughs> I'm not talking Don Pepin. I'm talking my father, maybe number yeah. one. Yeah. Or, or Labichu. Peppa, peppa, peppa. Lost in Chile, Centaurian. Something that's not as, as full in it. Mm-hmm. Wait, so um, what's, what's this? Uh, you said my father. What is that? My, oh, it's a, it's it's a, a cigar it's, company. It's a cigar company. It's oh, uh, no. I, I'm a, <laughs> it says, it says okay. avid smoker, but yeah. I'm an amateur. I still, that's like, cool. I don't yeah. know. No, like, no, it's a great question. Yeah, my, my, my father is a line. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, and from from that line specifically, um, f- uh, from Don Pepin, they, they tend to run a, l- a little peppery. Peppery. Okay. Um, they, you, you, you can have, uh, have you ever had like a David P. Ehrlich? No. no? Well, David P. Ehrlich runs peppery as well. Yep. Uh, okay. So anything that has really pepper on the palate. So if we were going to just, and I'll only use a sentence with this, if we were going to go uh, boutique uh, tatouage, Yep. Would, has pepper. So anything with a pepper element, in my opinion, would go well with a red Zinfandel. Yep. That's that's the whole point of the conversation. Okay. <laughs> Section one. Right, right? We line. got four more to get through. <laughs> Wait. We got four more to get through. Side, little, little side story. Yep. My favorite thing is when people come in and they're looking for that pepper and I bring them. They might not know a lot. And I'm like, oh, well, this is my father's cigars. And they go, your father makes cigars? Yeah, right. Oh, my God. That makes my day. Makes my day. I love it. Oh, yeah. No, no. Yeah. He makes cigars. That's exactly what you said to my father. And I was like, your father makes cigars? All right. I'm going to (laughs) listen. All right. Yeah. So anything with with, uh, that would have a pepper in in the profile. 
So, you know, if you're doing Stogies of the Week, uh, the segment of Stogies of the Week there, um, you know, anything with the Pepper profile that either Joe D or Paul or you or myself brings up there would definitely go well because there is a little bit of Pepper uh, elements there with, with the mix of berries. I, it, to me, it would kind of mm. draw, draw yeah. it out a little bit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Again, I'm not a big – I don't like the – as crazy as this may sound, uh, even in the cigar world – uh, and I'm making a comparison where I don't like a lot of box press cigars because I don't like the way they feel in my Interesting. hand. Interesting. I don't like Zinfandel because I don't like the way it is on my palate. Even though I know I'm missing out on box press, I know that's another Stogie Geek segment. Box. I know. I, love I smoke press. them. I smoke them. But Killing it dri- me, small. But, but it drives me crazy <laughs> because me. because I I I uh, you know I'm all over the place. You know I'm animated. Right? I, I believe you? that. You? No way. Yeah. I mean, Are you kidding me? No right? way. You remember that when he no came way. in next? No, that's another story. Stay focused. Focus. Yeah, stay another focused. Day, stay day, focused. On the day. wine. On All the right. wine. Well, moving on. If you were going to have a uh, Chardonnay, mm-hmm. right? A uh-huh. Chardonnay. Okay. So Chardonnay tends to one rub. Dry. It's very dry. Yes. Uh, it, it's it's um mm. it's not bitter. It's a little it's thicker on the palate like in regards to the taste texture over there. However, one of the things that I want you to 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 pay attention to when the next time you have a Chardonnay is it has a, um, a, 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 a crisp, smooth finish yep. or, mm. or a crisp, dry finish, yep. right? So that being said, a s- classic facing, right? Yep. A classic facing that w- would go with something that's pretty dry, um, maybe... I don't want to use the word sandy. I have a, a like like it's just dry. It's yeah. really mm. dry on the like you know like a fresh gut. It's dry. Yeah, uh, has I that. You. Okay, you, we all got a visual. Yep. We're good. Moving on. Um, there. <laughs> okay. Well, take <laughs> all right. Take this, two. Right? Yeah. What, what do you? What would you want to 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 bring that out? Right. So I was thinking. Okay, if it's really really dry on the wine side. Mm-hmm. Okay, we would probably need a Connecticut. Creamy, yep. something or other, right? With that something or other is a cigar, right? Yep. So we, we need a Connecticut uh, creamy wrapper with a smooth finish. You mix it like an EP or a, um, what was that? An Ashton. Or, yeah. Ashton, right? This, um, what are the Southern was, Draws has a Connecticut. Sure, you, you can you yeah. can go there. That, that's both getting to the boutique, Peak but stuff, right? but, but yeah. uh, actually that Bigger that roses stuff. that that, that roses sharing. Sharon. The roses that, yeah. uh, that would that would work. That's in my yeah. uh, my next yep. thing is to try. So okay, that would it's a good it's a good stick. It's actually. good. Yeah, I've, okay. I'm still using the okay. Weed, yeah, you know? okay. Yeah. I'll look it's, at that. It's good. <laughs> but so so when you're thinking of a Chardonnay, you want to bring that out. I was thinking um, uh, regionally specific Dominica, right? Because I think okay. the, you know cigars from from Dominica bring out the classic quote unquote palette for creamy there. So yeah. I'm thinking maybe Romeo and Julieta, Ashton. Um, um, yeah, um, yeah, no, you if know. you're gonna do something <laughs> Brenda's yeah, like the, shooting this whole thing down. No, right? I'm not shooting anything. The idea was um, to, to The idea is that you know I would go I would go <laughs> with something like Nashon um or Laura Aurora. They do mm-hmm. a lot. Okay, um yeah. the Leon Jimenez mm-hmm. real nice. If you're gonna do something dry that brings in light notes of sweetness with that creaminess and you almost get a nuttiness to it so you get a lot of dimension in that very mild cigar that will pair well with something like chardonnay okay I'll, i will drink chardonnay every now and then but if i'm out of whiskey but see what i was going you, you oh, yeah. want you almost want that balance so you have a yeah. really really dryness so you want to go with something connecticut really really creamy, creamy. and smooth to balance yeah. it out even if a little mm-hmm. sweetness will will Kill a little bit of that. But not balance. infused sweetness. No. I was, gonna, I was, not I was just going to ask that. Not like, not too, sweetness. not overly no, sweet. No, if you're going to do something really sweet, like like I said, my favorite thing in the morning is grabbing maybe something sweet with a black cup of coffee. Because mm-hmm. I can't have cream. Mm. So, a black cup of coffee, you get a little bit of that bitterness, a little bit of that bite versus a little bit of sweetness. It's like having a black cup of coffee without actually the having cream, that yeah. sugar to it. Mm-hmm. So, saves you on calories. Oh, oh, there you go. There now, you go. welcome to health story. Lounge life, right? Lounge, Lounge, life. Lounge life. You have some people want to be fancy pants, right? <laughs> right? So I want to include that too. Oh, I wore my fancy pants just for this occasion. You wore your too. fancy pants, you my know? Fancy pants. Actually, so did I. So you know, I, if you want, if what? you're, you know, you saw my fancy pants. <laughs> if you want to be like Rico Suave, again, I'm showing my age, right? If if you want to be like Rico Suave and you say, Rico I'm gonna try Suave. a Bordeaux, right? A Bordeaux, a French Bordeaux, <clears throat> or any type of Bordeaux. What's, what happens is, as far as the Bordeaux wine is concerned, you have um, a lot of uh, black fruit layers, 
think um, heavy Dang. and rich. Mm. See, so it's the opposite Dang. of what we were talking yeah. about, right? So that being said, so if, if you're gonna go if you're gonna go uh, heavy and rich. Um, with with some black f uh, fruit flavors, with some earth, and then obviously most Bordeaux have what they call a uh, oak finish, where you can you can really taste it. Obviously, without getting pseudo wine geeky, it's aged in oak barrels, yep. especially yep. in France, right? And it's funny okay. because if you take it out of France and you put it in another region, say uh, you know Washington State or California, they actually put it in a steel. Barrel, some of them. Oh, that's instead cool. of the, and you can actually taste texture-wise the difference. So you can take the same mm. blend, mm -hmm. put it in a steel barrel versus an, and you can feel it. In my opinion, right? I could probably do a blindfold test and tell you if it was steel or not. I'm, I'm, I'm almost there. And when I go to places, um, I do a lot of wine tastings as well as okay. as a hobby um, there. And and when when I go there and I ask them, is this steel? And they're like, well, actually, I've been to a place locally where they say that it's done in oak barrels. And they said, well, actually, it's mixed. I said, well, what do you mean? He goes, well, we run out of, we do the same blend, but for volume purposes. And, and you can taste the texture oh, difference. And, that, and that's like, just like when I was on my Don Papine kick mm -hmm. back in 2007, right? The roller, not, not the blend, right? There were certain mm -hmm. blends that I liked. And I was starting to find out that I like different cigars that are rolled by the same roller. So I'm like, hmm, I'm on to something there, right? So, you know, uh, it's, it's, it's the same way. So with that being said, when you have a French Bordeaux, right? And uh, again, th uh, think heavy, rich, black fruit, earthy with an oak finish. Yeah. What would you think cigar-wise would go with that? Uh, for something like that, I something like the Charter the, Oak. No, I, I oh, would, I would, close. Yeah. I would go yeah. with like the idea. Christoph GC, the Glen Case. There you go. I love it. Why? Um, what, what, what's the because blend? Because what's the blend? You're in gonna get um, a blend of a couple different like Nicaraguan, um, but you're gonna get that dark chocolatey wrapper, but it's gonna have light notes of um, dry fruit in it, like cherry mm. notes and stuff like that, which mm. would pair well with it. You, you ready um, for this? You ready for you this? Ready for this? Right. Choose ready. something mm -hmm. where the wrapper mm -hmm. is oily, rich. Maybe Maduro, right? Yep. This article is mm -hmm. a couple years old, so it automatically defaults to Maduro. But now, yeah. you know, we have we have oily wrappers that are. That's why there. I want to try to right. okay. Yeah. Giving a cigar that has notes of coffee and black cherry. So just said it. There you go. There it you works. go. Uh, if you were going, if you were going, <laughs> I didn't get this job because I'm cute. If you were going, <laughs> if, if you were going, Careful me. if you were going classic, oh, 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 I'm just kidding. <laughs> get into the point. <laughs> get into the point of the show. Okay. Right. Right. We're trying to stay focused here. Right. Okay, all right trying all right. to stay focused. What classic facing would you would you use? Like cla classic for for think old, older cigars. Christoph's been around for a while. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Great. Alrighty then. <laughs> Listen, kid, I'm yeah. the manager. You're, you're <laughs> I'm going back I to the start, studio. Uh, you, you understand where I, where I start. Next week when you meet the two new co-hosts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and my age starts with a two. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right. I, I was thinking I was thinking anything, anything Maduro. Mm. And I was thinking going old, not really old school, but kind of old school. I was thinking Camacho, Triple Maduro. I love Actually, the Triple Maduro. Uh, uh, but it, a, lot, it, a lot of people it, get afraid oh, of that cigar. No, I the, love that cigar. It like, has so much dimension. Yes. Uh, it's the only thing in my humidor that is all wrapped by the Filo Maduro. Mm -hmm. um, and I, you you would think you're going to get same old flavors using that much Maduro in it. Um, that cigar has so much dimension as you're smoking it. Yep. And lots of different flavors in that. Um, so, yeah, really good and, stick. But like I said, it, you know, Camacho... Really good. I know um, they reblended a lot of series over the years after yep. um, Christian left. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know for sure, for sure, mm -hmm. if um, they blend the triple Maduro again after. Um, but like I said, something like the Christoph GC. And, yep. uh, you know, I've met Glenn Case plenty of times. Mm -hmm. um, not even on a personal note, just on that cigar itself. Um, anyone looking for like almost like that dry fruit infusion that is still a full full of body cigar that will give you a little bit of spice and a little bit of those light nuances of it. Um, Do you have a Bordeaux so, next door? 
Huh? You have Bordeaux next door? You have I a don't carry a Bordeaux right now. Uh-oh. Well, maybe. Stop throwing me Uh-oh. in the <laughs> <laughs> Works both ways, man. Yeah. Works both what? ways. <laughs> Moving on. He's wearing a shirt that says James, and he's throwing me under the uh, bus? Uh, no, I'm going to ask about that later. I, I have a, I had a plan to ask about that. Plan to ask about that. It causes havoc at a bank. I've been there today. Anyway. A lot of havoc. Yeah, a lot of havoc. Give them an ID, and, and they think this yeah, is yeah, James uh, on the front. Throws them off. People get rowdy. <laughs> so anyway, French Bordeaux with anything uh, triple Maduro or the Christoph that Brenda <laughs> had recommended will will work. And the reason wh- where I was going there is the complexity the the complexity of the actual bur- Bordeaux that's in there. It's a, it, it's got it's a wine. It's thick. Uh, it's got tons of legs. It can be run heavy. Um, can I can I ask a question about the legs? Sure. <laughs> so you put like a like a hard liquor in the freezer for a long time, and you notice it 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 looks a lot thicker. It has it as you say it drags the legs on the line from the mm-hmm. this gin's been sitting in the, in the freezer, and it creates like legs like that. What what do you really mean by thickness, and it creates legs like that? Like right, yeah, sure. So you see how this this is set, subtle, right? Yeah. So when you swirl it like this, right? It creates you a see, line. You see how it has yeah. the line of where it goes, and then it starts to go down. You see it start to drip yeah. on the side? That's there. Yeah. So the thicker, the thicker the consistency of the wine. See, like it's not dripping that hard as fast as, fast as that wine is. Oh, well, no. I, there's no legs right there at all. Oh, yeah. Well, she finished the legs. But, <laughs> but, so so what will happen I is. I usually finish with the legs. <laughs> so the, okay. So, so the, so the, the thickness then. over there will, uh, will, will, will let you know <laughs> if it's, if it's going to be, uh, you know, watered down or if it's going to be thicker or, or have mm. a heavier body on the wine. I, that's all I'm meaning by that. Okay, okay. You know? um, uh, the next, uh, I have two more to get through and then we'll, we'll wrap bodies. up with, with this one right quick for, uh, for the segment. Um, Chianti. Now, you have Chianti? Fava Chianti. beans and a nice yeah. Chianti. <laughs> ah, that's <what> I'm <laughs> <laughs> Right, right, right. <laughs> um, you know, Chianti is, is it's, it's a dry... Red wine, uh, medium. It's got a medium body to it. Uh, there, uh, one of the things that can happen there is is it tends to run a little bit fruity, yep. right? Would you agree? Mm. We can't do it runs yep. a little bit fruity. So my rationality behind that is um, since you're going a, a lot uh, fruity there, you you want to go for uh, something that uh, maybe has some Nicaraguan. Tobacco to it, mm. uh, but smooth Nicaraguan, like an LFD. Well, well it it well, maybe. Dominican, well, well it, it but dep- good try. It, I tried. It, it <laughs> depends. Try. No, no, no. I just did my reviews. I so. actually put Nicaraguan in two different categories. <laughs> um, uh, uh, there, there is a, a strong Nicaraguan, right? You have you have stronger where it's like well, okay, pff, you yeah. know you're smoking Nicaraguan tobacco, wrapper binder filler, whichever. And then there is now with this with the boutique revolution coming through, you have an influx. My opinion. Of uh, Nicaraguan flavors that are getting a little subtle. Yeah. Okay. For mm. points of this exercise, right? I want uh, medium body Nicaraguan. So any medium body Nicaraguan that the consumer would like would would go with with a Chianti, in my opinion. So if you know uh, an illusion, an illusion would would be subtle, right? It would, yeah. It would be more you subtle. You could do like the Apennine, which is. Technically, like mild, mild, medium, mm-hmm. but it's got a lot of flavor. So it's not going to overpower the mm-hmm. Chianti, but it's going to work well in pairing with it. Mm-hmm. So it's not, like I said, if something, if, if you're more of a wine drinker and bringing the scar to match with your wine, mm-hmm. that's one thing. You can go a little bit lighter so your wine stands out a little bit more than your cigar. Now, if you're the cigar smoker and you're looking for something to pair with the cigar, I was just going a little bit full on the cigar with that wine. Um, because, like I said, it depends which end you come from. Isn't that Are you pairing your wine with your cigar or your cigar with your wine? Right. Which that, one? The, the Opus X Perfection, isn't that Nicaraguan? Isn't that a full body? Oh, you're getting Arthur? Opus X over here now all the time? Uh, is, it, <sighs> is it not? Um, I was ten- one of the ones I rated, the Arturo... Uh, Five five eighths by 
40? Well, I would have to I look remember. that up during the next segment. So hold well, that. Well, that's the one I reviewed, so. Oh, good. You just pull then numbers we'll, out. Then we'll, 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 we'll talk what we'll about do it is we'll, we'll talk about it when we get to it. <laughs> uh, okay, okay, okay. For a sense of classic facings, I know I'm on the cusp now with this, maybe. With this recommendation, <laughs> I know Brent is just going to freaking just slaughter <laughs> you alive. This. Right, she's going to, like, hate alive. this. If you say it again. I went with La Roma de Cuba. I love La Roma de Cuba. Oh, boom, boom, boom. So, and that's it for so. So, Canty, <laughs> boom, he got one right. <laughs> Good job, Joe. <laughs> right, right. Uh, Canty with with La Roma de Cuba, and 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 the reason why I like what I like about the La Roma de Cuba match with the Canty, the Canty. Which one though? Um, mm. the Mia Moore, the Mia Moore Reserva. I. I picked um I picked it from like a thirty thousand foot level, not not a <laughs> street level. But however, um, oh, I, 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 see, if you don't know me, I'm all street. I'm so all street. street. It's all street. I, I, I yeah. picked it from a, like a blend, but um, uh, I guess I would go Mia Moore. Yeah, mm. yeah. I've had the Mia you know? Moore. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because I wanted it to. That's just got like a ninety four, ninety five rating think, on that. Because I think it would work. Because the Canty would be so. Overpowering, quote unquote, right? Compared to, uh, say, a uh, Zinfandel or a Chardonnay, right? Yeah, definitely Special not Chardonnay, not yeah. overpowering as a Bordeaux. Yeah. But you know, bringing it back, um, I, I wanted something. What I like about the La Roma de Cuba is is I, it can hold its own against something like it, that. It, it, it'll it'll be an interesting contrast because mm -hmm. those sticks, to me. Um, Tend to change within mm -hmm. uh, the different sizes and blends that yeah. that oh. that they offer. So that that was that was. See, you say Mia more on that. I would say Mia more Reserva, for uh, that reason. Tomato, tomato. Of those notes, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, no. For the notes that are in the Mia more Reserva, that is out of Laura Roma de Cuba. Mm -hmm. That is more towards their full of body stuff, but. The way they blend that, they're bringing in other flavors besides just that full-bodied or something that's going to be peppery and full, and that's all you're going to get. Um, you're going to get light nuances of that little bit of sweetness from almost like a light cocoa-y um, coffee notes with that, with a little bit of nuttiness, and, um, but still a full-body profile with that Nicaraguan tobacco with a little bit of that pepper. So it's not going to outshine the Bordeaux, mm -hmm. and it's not going to overtake it, and mm. it's not going to be vice versa. You know what I mean? Like, it will give you that nice balance of the two. Um, like I said, we have a event coming up this Thursday. Mm -hmm. um, it is actually, uh, you get the Mia Moore and the Mia Moore Reserva, plus Steamship Brown and Sides for $20, oh. Thursday from uh -huh. 6 to 9. Boom. Um, so you get to try it. Those are both 94 and 95 rated throw cigar aficionado mm -hmm. on those cigars. So you'll always get a good burn, good draw, great flavors. And we have a lot of selection of different stuff to pair well with them. And once again, ask your bartender for details. You, you know, go. you grab that stick. What do you think will work well with that? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's also uh, business owners need to educate their bartenders on what that is. You know, when someone asks you, what will pair well with that? They go, oh, where do you want to drink? Mm -hmm. You go, oh, well, mm -hmm. that's helpful. But, you know, right. as long as they know, uh, that's the thing, as a bartender in a cigar club mm -hmm. versus just a regular bartender, you should know what will pair well with that cigar. Even if they just tell you what's in that cigar, you should know what to offer them. Right. I have this, this, and that. That way, they're getting the best experience they can get mm. with that cigar. Okay. So. To recap, before we talk about the last, last segment, because the last segment I saved was the most complex when it <laughs> comes to that, because it's like I'm gonna, it's, all, it's all over the map, in my opinion. So, you got a Zinfandel, right? You, you got some subtle flavors. You want to pair it with um, something that uh, has uh, Nicaraguan full body. There you go. Um, any type of cigar, that, that would be a spicy. Uh, your definition of spicy. <laughs> I paired it with a My Father. Right, uh, the Chardonnay, um, because you have um, the uh, crisp, light, smooth, fruity, creamy finish. Wanted to pair that up with anything Connecticut wrapper, light, cream, uh, light, creamy, smooth finish. Bordeaux <laughs> is pretty is pretty complex. 
So it's got a mix of black fr uh, fruit, uh, earthy. It's very thick on the palate, and uh, it does tend to run with an oak finish. I wanted to run that with anything with a rich, oily wrapper for Maduro, given the notes of the coffee and black cherry from the cigar. There you go. The Chianti, which we just reviewed, uh, with the La Roma de Cuba, and uh, the rationale behind that was because of the darker, rich fruit, fruit flavors in the Chianti. It'll bring it out um, with something that's Nicaraguan and a smoother Nicaraguan as opposed to a, a stronger, peppery Nicaraguan. Mm. Now, we're getting into my favorite category, which is the Reds. Okay, and this is the last part about this, and then we'll just <laughs> review right quick on the Charles and Charles and my pirated cigar here that I am completely, <laughs> completely enjoying. I'm sorry, every time right? he says Charles and Charles, all I can think is Charles and Charles. There you go, Charles right? Any type of I don't know. Any Aging type myself. of, of <laughs> any type of Cabernet, um, Melbach, or Merlot. Those are your red blends, right? Uh, they tend to run full body. They can be dry. They have an oak or a cedar taste. But the thing is, with those types of wine, they're all over the map. Yeah. You can have a Melbach that is as thin as a, sh uh, uh, a Chardonnay. And mm -hmm. so that goes out the window, right? Mm -hmm. You could have a Merlot that is super thick and rich in body. And again, that's regionally specific, yeah. right? So just really quick, you know, uh, Merlot's from Chile. The, the the not chilly cold mock right? chilly, chilly right? <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> right just want to be clear right? <laughs> right um you know uh tend to be a little thicker almost okay. you know they they be a little thicker very very heavy right so when so when you have um either a cabernet or a Merlot or a melback that's all over the map what type of cigar do you, do you smoke right you got to go with in my opinion, this is where you would experiment the most. Yeah. Because, because the wine barrier is all over the map. Yeah. You know, you, you can have a Cabernet and you'll be like, wow, it's real thin. I can show you Cabernets that are really thick and super yeah. rich that will s slam over a Bordeaux or over a Chianti. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm. So because the, they're all over the map, your cigar smoking segment <laughs> should be all <laughs> over the map. But you want to try but to pair it so again. The same way. Yeah. So if it's a lighter red blend, yeah. you want to go with well, a consider, heavier cigar. Always consider where you're going and where you're drinking um, and what they carry for red wines. Because yep. um, honestly, between Cabernet and Merlot, mm -hmm. average place is going to carry that generic one or two, three, maybe different Cabernets, different Merlots. Um, honestly... Rule of thumb for me with mm -hmm. something like that is if you're going to do something like that, go with what notes are already in there. Right. Let it pair well right along with it. Because like I said, a lot of house cabinets, house Merlots, you're going to get the same stuff almost everywhere you go. Um, so if it is getting you your cedar and all, go to uh, your classic stuff. Yep. Your classic stuff like Fuente will give you those cedary notes, right. those single notes. Um, so stuff like that, it makes it really easy. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, you start going into specific wine clubs and stuff like that, where you're going to get a lot of options on those, mm -hmm. maybe do a little more research or ask a bartender right. what would pair well with that. What does it taste like? Or even, even do a sampling of it before. Um, but like I said, every place I've ever gone, few, maybe two, three different Cabernets, Merlots, pair with what? Is in that because yep. you know you're gonna get that same balance and that nice smoothness between the two. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, a anything that's not as generic, bounce those opposites off each other. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If it's sweet, go a little spicy. If it's spicy, go a little sweet. Yep. You know, if it's dry, bring a little sweetness. Vice versa. You know, yep. Yep. anything like that. But anything in your generic Cabernet Merlot, if it's got those cedary notes. Stick with what you know. Mm -hmm. What you know has those same similar flavors, and at least you will have a nice pairing between the two. Right, right. Yeah. And that's uh, that's my take for introductory wine. Uh, wrapping up with this here, um, it's 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 got. I would say it's medium body, right? Uh, at the time, it was it was served cold. 
uh, I'm, I'm trying to time it perfectly. It looks like mm-hmm. I, I did a good job. It really brings out the pork tenderloin aspect of yeah. of there. Really, it just it just plays on the notes. It dances so well on the palate. Um, doesn't break, you know. There are price points when it comes to wine right. as well, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, there, uh, there's also, you know, uh, the argument of screw cap is usually cheaper. There's a cork shortage. There's, you know, some people don't like boxed wine. Um, slap the bag, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah box boxed wine, wine is a little. Are uh, you never slapped the bag before? Uh, oh, no, uh, well, actually, uh, take the bag out of the bag out of the box. Okay. And you like open it and you slap the bag at the end and like pushes it out. Pathetic. No, I it's a party. It's yeah. a frat for wine. Thing. Yeah, frat yeah. thing. Well, <laughs> no. <laughs> Honestly, if you're doing box <laughs> wine, the bang. Uh, well, go buy a cheap cigar at the gas yeah. station. Yeah. And call it night. <laughs> call it night. Thank you, Brenda. So, thank, thank you. you. Thank yeah. you. Hey, there is a there is a gas station but. near me that sells really really nice Avo cigars, the Tubos. They sell uh, like the the Cohibas. Would you like to give their they, name to wrap them? Wrap them I don't remember. What no, you okay, shouldn't you give go. their name because exactly. you should go out there and support your local tobacconist and not your local person who's undercutting with, with the price point. <laughs> no, no, no. Are you no. trying to get no? Me? No, are you trying <laughs> to show my boxing skills. Like, are you? Do you really? <laughs> they have a humidor. They have all of the. They have. It, it's like. I don't. I, I don't know how to describe. Excuse me. Me, me well, and Riley What, what microphone number is he? Can you shut that off? Thank you very <laughs> yeah. much. Right. Thank you very much. Shut so, it down. No, Just mute stay that. Stay tuned. Yeah, stay tuned. Next segment in Stogies of the Week. We'll be right back.